What is up guys? Welcome back to the Poor Man's Guide to Building a Food Truck. I can't believe I'm actually saying it, but this video is going to be a final walkthrough of, uh, of the food trailer. That's it. I mean, um, it's been an amazing, difficult, uh, <laughs> blood, sweat, tears kind of journey. But finally, the trailer is 99% done and uh, I figured that now is a good time to just take another video. I know it's been a couple months since the last one. Take another video and just kind of walk you through, you know, where we're at right now, and uh, and go a final walkthrough of the trailer. So let's um, let's get into it. But uh, before we do, I just want to say one more time, guys, thank you, thank you so much for the support. Um, all the comments that have been flooding in have been amazing, and um, yeah, I, I just want to thank you all so so much for that. Um, the YouTube channel is is blowing up with subscribers every day uh, there seems to be more and more and more uh, more and more comments more and more love so uh, thank you thank you so much for all the positivity um I, I i don't have any words for it um to be honest with you so let's uh let's let's get started and um you know let's let's dig into the final walkthrough here we go all right guys so starting from the front of the trailer uh you guys remember back on one of my very very first videos we talked about having the two the two uh, fuel sources um obviously the generator and the propane and um this is the front of the trailer as you remember when we first started there was nothing um but now we have um our generator the one that i decided to go with was the is the when 3800 um puts out enough um, amperage for what I'm going to be using it for um, push out about 27 28 amps something like that I don't remember off the top of my head but it's in that ballpark which is more than enough for what I need um, this baby right here cost me with tax through Amazon right around six hundred and seventy dollars so a great great deal um, it's right up there in the the brackets of like um, you know the predator 3500 um, the champion um, not quite at the level of like the Westinghouse generator, but you know, uh, nothing, nothing too far right below it. So um, that's the one that I have chosen to go with. Super, super quiet, really smooth. I'll give you a startup again in just a, in, in just a second to show you just how quiet it is. And then behind it, you can see we have our propane regulator all hooked up. Um, once again, the propane lines, I have them installed in the trailer but I am going to be having a professional come out and expect them. Um, I would urge you guys who aren't professionals to do the same, just to be on the safe side. Um, for me, it's worth the extra couple hundred bucks to actually spend and have somebody who really, really knows what they're doing come out and give it the once over and give me the green light. So that's what I'm going to be doing in the very near future. Everything's, uh, like I said, is hooked up, but that's what I'm going to be doing really, really soon. So um, this is um, mounted on the Stromberg trailer tray, which uh, was recommended by Frank Baltieris. Um, if you guys haven't already, make sure that you check out this guy because um, honestly, I wouldn't be able to do this without him. So please, please make sure that you check him out. Frank Baltieris, Roland Brady's food truck. Guys, awesome. So um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a startup of this and show you just how quiet it is. All right, guys, I'm just going to give it a quick uh, test run for you. So you can hear. Like this, you can hear I'm talking fairly normally. Also has a nice little eco mode on it. So bring the auto down even lower. And it's super, super quiet. So that's why we're looking at that. This is my propane changeover, which again, guys, uh, I'm not going to go into details about this because I installed it myself, yes, but I am not a professional. I'm going to have a professional come out and make sure that everything's good in it. So um, any comments about that, you know, I'm just going to tell you what I did, um, but I'm not going to tell you if it's right or wrong because, like I said, I'm not a professional. So there is our generator propane setup. Obviously, we're going to have two tanks mounted right underneath. That's going to give us supply to all of our cooking equipment. So this generator also has a pretty nice function. It has this auto shut off. So it's going to switch off the eco mode. It has this auto shut off mode. So when you turn it there, what that does is it cuts off the fuel supply, but it drains the carburetor so that all the fuel that's in the carburetor um, gets used up and it actually shuts off automatically, which is a really, really nice feature. It extends the life of the generator. So. Um, once I get my actual uh, my cable set up, which I have everything that I need inside the trailer to run my cable from here into the uh, the inlet plug. Right now, obviously, we're still connected to the house, but I'll make sure that I give you guys an update on that with the 
trailer actually running via the generator. Alright guys, let's just do a really quick walk around. So obviously this is um, the customer side of the trailer. This is where I'm going to be taking my orders right here. You can see I even have my POS system ready to go and this is where my order is going to be shipped out from. Um, I'm just really, really happy with how it came out. Um, I'm happy that we went with the two windows instead of just the one. And then on the back side, eventually what we'll be doing is putting our logo right here. And then you guys that have been following the channel, you already know we have the logo, which we did ourselves on this side right here. We do have a business phone number um, and everything set up now too. So we'll be putting that on the side of the trailer. So there's a really quick walk around of how the trailer looks. All right, and moving to the inside at the front of our trailer here, you can see we have our three compartment sink. And we also have our hand sink required by the health department. Um, we have our hand towel holder right here. We have the propane water here down there, water pump down there, water tanks mounted right below, really nice and convenient um, to save the space. But you can see our whole plumbing setup right here is nice and compact. Um, what we do have to do still is mount um, wire shelves above the three compartment sink. Um, at least in my area, you're not required to have drain boards either side of the three compartment sink. You can substitute them for wire racks in order to um, you know, put pots and pans and stuff to air dry. So that is something that we will be adding up there in the very near future, um, but that's not a big deal. That's something we can do in 10 minutes. So um, that is our plumbing. As you can see, um, we're really, really happy with how it came out. Uh, it looks pretty. It's pretty neat and tidy to me. Um, the propane, you can see it right here, guys. Um, we're running this uh, Homeflex line all the way. I don't have it uh, connected yet because like I said, I'm gonna have a plumber come and inspect it. So I'm gonna have him uh, check everything out before we go ahead and do our final fittings um, for the hot water heater. But that will be coming obviously really, really soon. What I'll probably do is once I actually have that inspection done is do another wrap up video and just show you guys with all the equipment running and the hot water coming through and all that kind of good stuff. So we'll probably get into that um, you know, later down the line. So once I get that done, I'll give you guys an update. All right, and onto our uh, serving window side of the trailer, obviously from inside, uh, we decided to go with two different size tables. We actually have a um, 60 inch by 14 inch uh, under the order window, and then we have a 48 inch by 14 under the pickup window. Um, that's just the size that it worked out because we decided to go with this um, NSF rated um, shelving unit. I don't know if you can see that right there. Yeah, there you go, NSF rated shelving unit. Because we're so, so tight on space in here, we figured it'd be a great idea to have this because we have this space in between the two windows, which ended up being perfect um, to have something like this to hold on to, uh, take out boxes, um, gloves, any extra materials that we might need while we're in operation. Um, this was a really, really handy piece of equipment to have, we figured. Um, and then you can see each of these tables has um, shelves underneath. They're really nice, really clean. We bought them all of this from Amazon, uh, which I'll leave the link in the description for it for you guys so it's easy to find. The tables, uh, I want to say the bigger one was right around $210, $220. The smaller one was about $189. And then the shelving unit was right around $45. Bucks. So nothing too crazy. Um, it is still expensive, but you know, not, uh, not too crazy. So that's our service window. And just as a customer perspective, as you can guys can see, this is the order window and this is the service window. We have those two really nice LED undermount lights that we installed. I'm really happy that we went with those. And then this is our point of sale. You can see we have it where it's nice and convenient for the customer to pay cash card. We will have a cash register, but cash card tap has all of that built in. Um, we decided to go with Square. Um, I know that there's a lot of debate as to which is the best POS system to use. I mean, there's a Clover, um, Toast is another one, but you know we just decided to go with Square and we'll kind of you know see how it goes. But if you guys have any opinions on it, or if you have experience uh, working with Square, let us know, put them in the comments right below. We'd love to hear the feedback on how you guys thought um, it went. And coming to the business end, uh, we have uh, our three pieces of equipment right here. We have, our two burner hot plate, 
which you guys remember in our previous video, we walked through uh, one by one these pieces of equipment all picked up from Websteron. Really, really good experience with those guys. So make sure you check out the previous video if you haven't already. We went through in a little bit of detail about each, th each of these three pieces of equipment. And over the top, we have our six foot hood from Viver.com. Um, again, really, really good experiences with Viver. Uh, on the top side, um, we have the fan, which is made by Ventilation Direct. Um, if you guys haven't seen that video, it's, it's, in, uh, it's in the video listing, so make sure you check out that. And uh, we have our switch right here, which switches the fan on. Oh, got some leaves up there somewhere. There she goes. This is something that's required by the fire department. Um, again, if you're in um, Florida, uh, at least in my Pope county, which is Pope County, um, if you have cooking equipment like this um, and you have, you, you're required to have six inches of space either side of that cooking equipment. So for example, I have uh, five feet of cooking space right here. Uh, we have a, uh, a 24 inch, 24 inch and a 12 inch, uh, but we need to have six inches of space either side of that. That's why we have a six foot hood. Um, so make sure you check with your local authorities on what are your requirements for that. Um, moving further down the trailer, we installed um, a warm out fan, which this thing's actually really nice. It blows, it blows really nice and cold. Uh, let's see if I got it. There we go. We got that plugged in um, and it does move side to side, but it's a nice breeze. Uh, we don't have air conditioning in here and we live in Florida, so it's gonna get really, really warm in here. So I'm planning on actually putting a couple more of these around the trailer just to get some air moving in here because in the summertime, it's gonna be pretty brutal. Uh, to be honest with you so um, I picked these up from Amazon uh, I don't remember the price off the top of my head but they weren't all that expensive I want to say they were about $30 something like that I'm not sure so don't quote me but I will leave it in the link in the description um, moving further all the way down the trailer we have our electrical box and uh, this is obviously where all of our power is coming from so eventually once we get the generator hooked up we have the cable which runs all, all the way underneath the trailer up through the wall and then into this um, electrical panel, which is right here. So um, again, if you guys haven't seen that video, it is posted somewhere uh, near the start and uh, you can check out how we actually ran the electrical through our trailer. Um, one more time, um, I'm not an electrician, so I just did my own research. I watched a lot, I watched a lot of Frank Baltieris' videos um, because he is an electrician and I followed his step-by-step -step process and it's worked so far. So um, please, please, please do your research, do your due diligence, and make sure that if you're not comfortable, that you hire someone to do it. Um, just like I'm doing with the propane, I'm not entirely comfortable with it, so I'm making sure that I'm doing it right and getting a professional to come look at it. So a little bit of uh, advice for you guys right there. And the last pieces of equipment to cover, guys, are the food warmer, uh, which I have a four pan food warmer. Um, picked up from viva.com and my last piece of equipment is my brand new fridge which I'm really really happy with um, it costs a lot of money yes um, but I am really really happy with it um, fires right up and, and it gets cold within I mean feels like seconds I, I want to say within like 90 seconds it's, it's pretty cold already so um, that's that's our last pieces of equipment guys the last things we're gonna do is we're gonna put some white aluminum on this back door right here and just really kind of finish it off because this wooden door just it just kind of kills the whole vibe <laughs> kills the whole vibe everything else looks nice and white and nice and clean and we have that dirty old wall back there so we're going to clean that up put some white aluminum on it um and that's going to be pretty much one of the last things to kind of button up um and that really does it guys um oh everything is actually bolted down to the floor now you can see we have our flange feet yeah, right there right there all of our tables have flange feet on them so everything is secure to the ground um one of the other things that we still need to do is secure the equipment so we'll be securing the equipment to the tables um after um i have um a plumber come and expect everything before i do my final final fittings we're going ahead and, uh, and we'll put those bolted down to the table so they'll move around while we're driving so um that about wraps it up guys uh, as you can see we've come a long long way since we first started this project and uh we're almost there and just to wrap everything up guys i just want to reflect one more time um on the journey that has been this food trailer as you know from my last video um it wasn't always easy and um not too long ago 
I was thinking to myself and doubting myself about whether this I was going to be able to pull it off. Um, when I first came up with the idea of doing this with no experience, no know-how, no electrical knowledge, no construction knowledge, no plumbing knowledge, no nothing, people laughed at me. People laughed at me. People told me I was stupid. People told me I was crazy. Um, I was wasting my money. Um, I was wasting my time um, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, this is the point now where we kind of get to prove everybody wrong. So um, thank you um, for the people that have really supported us the whole time. Um, I cannot thank um, Lillian, who uh, who is that amazing woman that I've talked to you about in the last video. Um, her support, her ferocity in driving me forward to get it done, it wouldn't be here without her. And uh, I'll make sure that she does show some little caveat appearances in the near future. Uh, she's just a little bit camera shy, but I want to make sure that um, that she gets recognition because there's no way that this would have happened without her. Um, my mum, my dad, my brother, my sister, who again are back in the UK, without their unwavering support, I wouldn't be here either. Um, and uh, and and my son, my 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 four about to be five year old boy. Um, you know, he's always so excited to see it and, you know, he's seen it, you know, as a little boy kind of how it's gone from stage to stage to stage. And now he's really excited whenever he gets to uh, come in the trailer and see how it's come along. So, um, hopefully maybe one day he'll get to ride along with me in it and, and enjoy it as much as I hope that I will. So, uh, I just want to take that moment, um, just to appreciate those people because, like I said in my last video on YouTube and on social media, everything can look like it's great, um, but that's not always the case. And uh, we have definitely gone through our struggles. And um, if you're in the same boat, if you're in the same position as as me, um, just know that it can be done. Um, a very, very first video, I thought to myself, you know, how am I gonna do this? And it's here. So it can be done. If you are really, really passionate about doing something like this, whether it be food truck or whatever it is you're passionate about, um, believe in yourself. Um, nobody's gonna believe in you as much as you. So um, that's the one piece of advice that I can really, really give you is that don't give up. Um, keep pushing forward if you're in that boat and um, it can be done. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. So coming up in the near future, guys, we're going to be doing a couple of dry runs, a couple of test runs, make sure that everything runs nice and smooth. So um, stay tuned for those videos because they will be coming really soon. Don't forget to check us out on social media. We do have our Savage Tacos Facebook page and our Savage Tacos Instagram page. So make sure that you check those out and give us a follow. Um, make sure that you check out our Poor Man's Food Truck, Poor Man's Food Truck TikTok and our Poor Man's Food Truck Instagram as well. Please, if you enjoy these videos, um, if you have any questions, like, ask comments, uh, ask questions, uh, drop comments, whatever you guys want to do right below. I'm going to leave all the information right below for you. And um, until next time, guys, thanks for watching.